Hey everybody, it's Julian McKenzie. And I'm Tristan Damo. Welcome to episode 94 of the Scrum Podcast. We are six episodes away from episode 100. We are still uh, just climbing that mountain towards that episode. There's eventually going to be the 30 under 30. There's going to be our scrummies coming up to. We are approaching pretty much Hall of Fame territory as far as I'm concerned. How many podcasts can you think of? Uh, that get to a 100th episode. And I mean, hey, it, it, it's almost at that time for celebration. And it's I'm, I'm grateful that I get to do it with my man, Tristan, and of course, with producer Kevin. It's great. We get to, we get to support um, young broadcasters in Canada. We get to support our fellow colleagues in the sports broadcasting world. And today, we get to talk about and support women's hockey. If you listen to this podcast, you know we are big fans of that. You know, we've had uh, guests within that world. We shouted out the Away from the Play podcast with uh, Melanie Desrochers, uh, formerly of Lake Canada as well as our good friend Safia Ahmad, who has co-hosted episodes of the Scrum podcast in the past. And for today's episode, we speak with Jaina Hefford, a four-time Olympic gold medalist for Team Canada, and uh, now the operations consultant of the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association. You may have heard, you may not have heard, uh, Secret Deodorant has donated $1 million towards the PWHPA. Uh, It was more of an investment, really. I don't know if you should say donation or an investment, but still, $1 million, not anything to sneeze at, and it will go towards the Secret Dream Gap Tour. And in the coming weeks... Uh, we could be seeing uh, some showcases, some games uh, from some select markets where we'll actually get to see some women's hockey being played featuring some of the brightest names in the sport. You know, at the end of the day, when you're talking about the push for professional sports or professional sports, uh, the money, it's about the money. And they're they're going to get some money, which that is great news that we saw in the past few days Maybe past few weeks, it might be a little uh, (laughs) anyway. But, uh, you know, I have it in my book. She doesn't hold that title, but I have him in my book as a journalist to never say no to an opportunity to talk to a commissioner or to talk to a leader of a sports league, a sports association. And this is exactly what we're doing with Jenna Hefford. Uh, We have an, an amazing talk about what is going on with the PWHPA? It was their first year last year. And now, you know, like every league, like every association uh, in, in the in sports association in the world, they're hit with the COVID reality, what that meant, what that means, what that meant, and what is going on with 2021, how you can help, how um, they can go forward. I uh, absolutely adored that conversation. It's... Uh, It's going to be great for women's hockey fans. It's going to be great for hockey fans. It's going to be great for casual sports fans. So um, really glad we got to uh, record this with Jenna. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say about this, uh, about this before without giving too much away. Yeah. I don't think we need to sell this any more than we both have Uh, without further ado. Take it away. Jaina Hefford. Hi, I'm Jana Hefford. Uh, I'm a former hockey player with the Canadian Women's National Team, a uh, five-time Olympian and a four-time Olympic gold medalist, and now uh, currently the operations consultant with the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association. Jana Hefford, thank you so much for, for joining Tristan and I on this week's episode of the Scrum Podcast. Great intro. Uh, let's get right into it with our questions. Uh, we know uh, Secret Deodorant has been involved with, with the PWHPA. Uh, I'm going to make sure I get that acronym right because it's so many letters. Uh, we know they've been involved with the, uh, with the organization before. How did this particular deal with Secret, a $1 million investment, come about? And, and how important is this investment to the game of women's hockey? 
Well, I think this is a bit of a milestone announcement for us to bring in a partner like this to the PWHPA. Secret Deodorant has been supporting women um, since 1956 um, and women's sport for a long time, and they've really wrapped their brand around equality. And for us to be able to work with a brand that really represents everything we stand for, which is equal sweat deserves an equal opportunity. Um, it's just so nice to know that we are so aligned in our missions and our goals. Um, this type of partnership started last year with the PWHPA, where Secret was a title sponsor of an event that we held throughout the Dream Gap Tour. Um, I'd like to think they found great value in working with the PWHPA and our athletes. And really, it's kind of just grown from there. Um, you know, it wasn't any big pitch or proposal. It was just, you know, how do we do more? How do we support the women in a bigger way? We all know the importance of this and where we're trying to get to. And so they, you know, we pushed them to to commit as much as they could to make sure we were elevating the game. We were supporting our athletes. And really, we got to this number of a million dollars, which is incredibly significant. Um, and it's going to allow us to do a lot of things. And, and, you know, first and foremost, I think it just gives our players the confidence that people are here to stand with them. They support what they're doing. They're going to stand beside us as we advocate for the creation of a professional women's hockey league. And secondly, you know, we, we are worth this and we are going to bring the women's game to new levels. We're going to make sure that these players are visible and there's exposure to women's hockey and that we continue to fight for equality <clears throat> in our sport. So just as a small tangent, uh, it, it is as a as a women's hockey fan, it is great to see that uh, that this investment first, and then the, to see the PWHPA come back. I was there in uh, when uh, when when you when you were in Laval when the when it came to Laval to to see Hillary Knight back to see um, to see our fellow uh, podcaster Mel Derache back on skates in front of uh, of thousands of fans. It was really nice to see. Um, But so, um, as is there, so when it comes to uh, women's hockey, when it comes to uh, professional, when it comes to sport, um, there's always the uh, broadcast side of things as well. Uh, we speak a lot about broadcasting here on the Scrum. Um, is there any uh, plans or any uh, broadcast deals on the way for uh, the second edition of the uh, Secret uh, Dream Gap Tour with uh, either a national broadcaster, a streaming partner, or otherwise? Yeah, I mean, great question. We know that in order to grow the game, you, there's got to be visibility and there's got to be exposure. And we often end up in this conversation around chicken and the egg, right? And it's like, you know, well, how's it going to be paid for? But if people don't know it exists, you're not getting people in the stands. And, you know, it's it's pretty cyclical. And um, so, yes, definitely on our radar to find a broadcast um, partner in this. Uh, we're working with Secret on that. Uh, we know it's it's one of the most important things to growing the game. And we need a partner that also sees the game in the same way and understands that that exposure is how we continue to grow the sport and that, you know, the women deserve that. So we're constantly number of conversations, nothing to announce yet, but I, I hope at some point here um, we have some great news around broadcast. Streaming is obviously something we, we have a commitment to as well. We realize the impacts of COVID um, certainly could change whether we could have fans or not or the number of fans so we need to ensure that our games are accessible and that viewers can see them if i may on on that topic you know uh, with that broadcast deal uh, with that broadcast deal my bad with the secret deal um with uh, a, a big brand name attached to uh to a um, to to an event like that i think we saw it a little bit with the nwsl i'm a soccer reporter so i i, I tend to, to to follow a little bit more on that side of things but Is it better when you sit at the table with broadcasters to have such a big partner, a, a recognizable brand name attached to uh, something like the Dream Gap Tour? Yeah, that makes a, a huge difference. I mean, when you look at, um, you know, as you start to look into broadcast deals and media spends and advertising, you start to figure out how the pieces all come together. And, um, you know, I think Secret would tell you themselves, I've heard them say it many times, that they can't wait for the day that they can buy commercials during women's hockey professional games on television. So, um, you know, we have a lot of great partners and big brand partners that have media um, spends and it's a priority to them. So having those people with us and sitting with us at the table and saying, how do we make this happen? Um, and say that we're, we're here and we're willing to support this in a big way, that, that makes an incredible difference. A lot of leagues obviously are, are trying to find ways to, to restart themselves amidst this pandemic. 
Uh, did you enlist any help from from any other leagues, whether male or female, to to kind of get a sense of how to go about uh, getting players back on the ice for for what you guys are up to? You know, I, I think there's many conversations that have happened, um, but additionally, we also look at our situation as being unique to others. Um, you know, you look at professional sport and the ability and the resources to create a bubble. Um, is not something that we could look into. Uh, we have tapped into some of the medical experts that have helped those people create bubbles. Um, so, you know, we're looking at a unique situation here. We, you know, we had a plan A, which now we've moved into a plan B. Um, and, and we're still not firm on those details, but we do know that, you know, obviously the health and safety of our players and staff and fans is a priority. So we're respecting all provincial and state and federal guidelines as we move forward here. But um, we're going to do our best to navigate those and, and ensure that we have some sort of competition that happens in 2021. You probably noted in our announcement, we didn't secure dates or, or locations yet because those are still fluid and, and the situation is evolving daily pretty much. Um, but you know, we're committed to, and secrets committing to be a part of the 2021 secret dream gap tour, whenever that happens, but fingers crossed in our minds, we hope it can happen in the spring. Um, what I'm curious about, uh, as our, as our next question here, uh, with the dream cap door, I know there are still some dates that need to be figured out and locations as well, but when it does happen, what are you excited about the most when it actually comes to reality? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm excited for, um, you know, us to just get back on the ice. We're going to have a new look. We've got some good, great new partners that have jumped on board. And I think maybe what I'm most excited for is to see that first team win a cash prize pot. Uh, This is so unique to women's hockey, certainly in, in most sports. And for our athletes that have had Women's hockey's had a lot of, you know, tough news over the last few years from the league shutting down to the world championships canceled, four nations canceled. And so for us to be make an announcement like this, that we have a partner that's supporting us and standing with us. And you know what, we're going to create these opportunities for you guys to play and have this great competition and win money. Um, It's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be engaging for fans, but it's going to step it up a little bit for the players as well. And there's a lot on the line every time they hit the ice. You know, there's there's obviously um, a lot of positives. The fact that you know there's there's that there's that amount of money coming in. There's uh, something in 2020 or 2021, uh, despite the whole uh, the the COVID situation. Um, I was wondering how how have the players reacted to the development that there there's going to be something? Um, is is uh, is it on board unanimously? Are there some that are still considering their options because of the COVID reality? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we haven't had many players uh, choose not to skate. Uh, we we announced our rosters the same day we announced uh, the secret partnership. Um, so, you know, anybody can go check those out on our website. And the rosters are, are so deep. Uh, you know, we have over 38 Olympians in the PWHPA, over 60 plus national team players. Um, so these players are, are committed. They love the game. They're passionate. Some of them get the opportunity to play for national teams. So it becomes, you know, more of a career for them. And um, so, again, we're making sure, you know, their health and safety is a priority. They all understand um, that that will always be the case uh, regionally right now. I think in Montreal, we have two or three players on the ice. In Toronto, we have up to 10. Um, Calgary is totally different. And then we look at the U.S. states. So, uh, you know, it's a situation that's challenging for our players, but this group of players is resilient um, and they're united and they can continue to stand, I think, together and us push forward for uh, that end goal of a, of a truly professional women's hockey league. I imagine uh, once more dates and, and more details will come in the next few days and weeks, uh, a lot of promotion will be coming through for the Dreamcap tour and, and the games that will be going on. And, and I think of what I've seen over in the last year or so, with the support going around leagues like the WNBA where you have the female players that are are doing their thing in the leagues and they have their male counterparts supporting them. And, and just in my view, I feel it's unlike any set of support system I've seen for, for so many other leagues for whether it's for soccer, whether it's for hockey or other sports, I'm just kind of curious about your opinion on this. What do you make of the support given out from male hockey players, male professional hockey players when it comes to women's leagues and women's players? Well, you know, I think first to touch on the the NBA, WNBA side of things, I mean, they have certainly proven themselves to be leaders in so many ways. And, 
you know, when it comes to social and racial racial justice. And then, you know, additionally, in, in the men supporting the women, and we always say that this isn't a women's issue, right? This is a, a society's societal issue. And we need men as our champions and our allies. And I love seeing that in the NBA, um, where those players respect the women for being players. It's, it's not about them being women. They're just basketball players that there's admiration and respect between the two. Um, so I, I think they're really setting the bar in terms of that. I think, you know, male hockey players certainly support our players and, and many of them, you know, grew up in, in same small towns and, um, you know, great relationships. I think sometimes it's challenging for them to know how to support. We don't have the same infrastructure as a WNBA where they are, you know, very much aligned with, with the structure of the NBA and supported in that way. And, and many of the teams share teams and ownership partners. So um, I think it's challenging to figure out how to do it. Um, but I, I have to assume that um, the, the players in the NHL are, are starting to see the potential and the change they can create by standing with the women. Um, you know, I, I don't think we're at a point, we used to say, well, you know, they have a sister or they have a daughter, but I don't think you have to have that. I think you have to look at society as, you know, we're men and we're women and we're in this together. And, um, you know, so I hope to see more of that, but I, I think our players, the, ma- the male players have been really supportive um, and I, I just hope we can help them find new ways to do it and, and hope maybe challenge the NBA for that. Uh, that would be a pretty cool thing to do. I think you had players. The, oh, go ahead. Sorry. You go ahead. I, I, I was going to say, off. I think one of, one of the great things when we were talking, you were mentioning Julian about, about the NBA and the WNBA. I think one of the really cool things that we saw a, during this whole bubble tournament that the NBA had was just how many players were wearing that orange hoodie. I feel like if I'm saying the word orange hoodie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I saw a few days ago, and um, if they're not sold out by the time uh, by the time this podcast comes, I still out, can't get one. You, you I still get, can't get one. But but the PWHPA made a collab with Adidas, and you guys have a a blue hoodie. So is there some type of hope that the blue hoodie becomes the orange hoodie in the hockey world? Can I get one? <laughs> yes they're uh you know they're they're pretty awesome i haven't seen them you know in my hands yet but they're awesome and the thought is yeah how people ask us all the time how they can support the pwhpa and if we're not in your your town or your community it's a challenging question um so this is a way to support the women um you know the the pwhpa is run by the players we have a nine player board they're all players so they're the ones who who decide where revenue goes so you you are supporting the players when you do this um to to challenge the WNBA, obviously i think we have a long way to go to get there um but this is certainly a way to do it and um to just add on to that i i think the part i appreciated the most while they were in the bubble was that it wasn't just a one day hey guys everyone wear your orange shirt today it was like these guys were wearing them you know, every day there was a different guy wearing them. It wasn't Mm -hmm. a plan they had in place or a direction they were given. I think it was just, Hey guys, like if you have a chance to support the women, here you go. And they did it. Um, So it it felt a little more organic than an actual campaign per se, which I loved. Um, So yeah, hopefully people will jump on board. It's the first time we've offered merchandise and um, we, we see it as a great way for people to support our, our players. But taking it back to my original question, the follow-up I just want to ask you, I just wanted to ask is, is even before uh, what we saw go down in the bubble with, with leagues kind of trying to stand together against societal and racial issues, have, have hockey players within the PWHPA in the past, for whatever reason, ever lamented either, either just kind of called out the fact that maybe there wasn't enough support from, from other male players around there? Has that ever been an issue? Has anyone ever kind of come to you with that? I don't think so. Um, And, and, you know, myself being a player, uh, when I played and I had a chance to interact a little more often, I guess a little more frequently at Olympic Games and different things with the male players, you know, they're fans. They, they, somebody, I I read this about the NBA. It's like, if you like basketball, then you like all kinds of basketball, right? It's not just being picky. And I see the same in hockey. These guys appreciate the game. I've seen the women and the men on the ice together and and they're like little kids playing the game. They, They love it. They say the passion is the same. And so I think the guys definitely respect that. I think, as I said, it's been a challenging uh, landscape, I think, for people to figure out how to support us and what we're trying to do. And um, that's part of, you know, the secret deal and broadcast and the hoodies. How do we continue to push the conversation? 
And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be successful this year in, in creating more and more talk about change and how we can make the game better, more inclusive and, and in the long term, you know, healthier. Um, so uh, there there used to be an era in women's hockey where there were two leagues. There were the, the CWHL, which uh, Julian and I are, are very familiar with. We're both in the Montreal area. We both have uh, Les Canadiennes merch. We, we both very much miss Les Canadiennes. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Safia Ahmad. I, I have to. Um, so... Back in that era, the, there were there was a, a relationship between the CWHL and the AWHL, and now um, the reason I'm bringing this up is because in in the next season there's going to be uh, an, an NWHL team in uh, a Canadian market in Toronto, um, which hasn't been a thing since the creation of the NWHL. So, especially considering that, um, how would you describe the re- the relationship? Uh, of the PWHPA uh, towards the NWHL and vice versa? Mm-hmm. Well, I think obviously we, we love seeing opportunities for women to play the game. And if the NWHL provides that for some women, um, you know, that's great for them. I think our vision of what the future should look like for professional women's hockey, I think we have a different way to get there. And, and we believe that there needs to be the infrastructure in place. The, the investment needs to be made Um, we believe the NHL plays a role in the future, whatever that may be, but, but they need to be at the table. Um, so, you know, we, we don't think real change will happen without these difficult conversations and people standing up for what we really believe in. Um, we've all, many of us, including myself, I played in three different versions of a league that would start up and shut down and start up and shut down. And to be quite honest, um, there wasn't a whole lot of difference over the 17 years that I played in terms of that club hockey, we called it professional, but at the end of the day, um, the product was great, but the business side was not professional. And um, until we were willing to step up and, and the players collectively did that and said, you know, this isn't good enough. We have to find another way if this is going to be successful, nobody wants to go through this again, where it's, you know, build from the ground up. And a few years later, when people aren't getting a return on investment, they walk away. Um, So, you know, we respect the opportunity that the NWHL is providing for many women. uh, But we, we see the future and the vision of professional hockey a little bit different. And, and we want to stand up for that. We want to push for that. Um, To kind of piggyback off of Tristan's question, I I want to ask the same question, but with regards to the PWHPA and the NHL, you mentioned in your previous answer that for for any future development, the NHL has to be at the table. Where are these two sides at in terms of coming together and, and having the NHL be at the table for anything that comes for the future of women's hockey? Well, I mean, we have a great relationship with the NHL and um, the reality is, you know, for a women's pro league to happen, it's a, it's a massive investment. You know, we're not sitting here saying, you know, you should do it tomorrow. Why aren't you doing it? This is easy. It's not easy. And it's, you know, it's going to require a lot of work. It's going to require losses. Um, You know, it's not going to generate revenue right away. No league does. Um, And when we look at the WNBA experience, some pretty good level of success over these last couple of years, but they're 25 years in. So they had a vision 25 years ago for this. And, you know, maybe they're starting to see it now. So we understand this is not an easy thing. Um, I think from our perspective and our players perspective, we want to see progress in the women's game. And from an NHL side of things, I think we see that they're supporting the women's game. Um, When you look at, Three years ago at the NHL All-Star Game, they had some women demonstrating the events. Two years ago, they had Kendall Coyne in the event, skating, as we all remember. Um, That was groundbreaking for our sport when she she participated, and it did incredibly well. I think opened a lot of people's eyes. And then you go last year, and you look at the All-Star Game, and now, instead of four people, we had uh, 20 players there. And we put on this three-on-three game that, again, put us on a platform that people could see the game that have never seen the women's game. So... We see that progress. This secret partnership is a big part of that progress. And as long as we feel like we're moving forward, um, I think, you know, we're in this and we're going to fight. And, you know, if we felt we were stale and we we were going backwards, then we'd have to really examine things. But we see the progress in the game and we know the value in it. Uh, Jaina, I know you can't say that, uh, you know, you need a women's league tomorrow or very soon. But Tristan and I can both say that a women's league is needed. Absolutely. Um, 
I want to just follow up by just asking what is the greatest challenge uh, ahead for, for the PWHPA? I know you listed a, a whole bunch of different things that are kind of on your mind for, for the, for the dream gap tour and other things going on, but what would you say is the biggest challenge that lies ahead? I mean, certainly COVID and the pandemic and, and not knowing when it's going to end the uncertainty of it. Um, the, the challenges it's presented to our partners, um, to NHL clubs, uh, you know, the, obviously we all face different challenges and, and we appreciate that and understand that. So um, that that's the biggest thing right now. Our plans change daily, weekly. Um, you know, you're having these difficult conversations, but then you have these great conversations where, you know, people are still in your corner and supporting you. So we'll navigate through this the best we can um, and, and try to ensure that we're we're doing something really great for the women's game in 2021. So uh, 2020 is ending to the uh, is is close to ending to uh, hopefully the the joy of everyone uh, because uh, it's 2020 has been too long. Uh, yeah. But going into 2021, what can we wish for the PWHPA, and uh, what can hockey fans or just casual sports fans that just happen to be listening in can do? for the PWHPA in 2021? Well, you know, I hope this secret announcement is just the start of a new wave for women's hockey, new wave of momentum. As, as we talked about, the last couple of years have been really tough. And, you know, thank God our players are resilient and they're determined and they're still standing strong. But I'd love to see this new wave of m- momentum roll into everything we do in the secret dr- dream gap to a roll into a world championships in Halifax next year. Uh, fingers crossed that happens. And then very closely after that, we're rolling into Olympic and, and, and that whole season, the lead up to the games in 2022. And then, you know, hopefully a pro league, if, if not sooner. Um, you know, it'd be great to see a, a number of really good news stories for the women's game, which we haven't had in a while. So that would be my hope. Um, I think for people that, you know, want to support the women, want to support women's hockey, I think it's just, you know, follow us, tune in. If we're on TV, make sure you watch because every person that turns their television on matters or clicks on a link and watches a streamed game. Um, you know, when we go to partners, they're going to ask, you know, how many viewers do you have and, and how many people are watching your games online? And um, that stuff matters. So, um, you know, if you want to support, you got to do those things. You got to follow us. You got to engage with us online, you know, maybe buy some merch, come to event if we're in your city um our our women are amazing they're great ambassadors and they're incredibly accessible and uh we need everyone on our side to really push the game forward i have one last question for you on that subject you're absolutely right in terms of growing the game essentially we need people out there who are able to you know go to games buy merch support them in those ways and what's cool is every time I, i hear about you know people going to women's games and getting to interact with the players, it's so different versus going to a men's game where you don't necessarily get that same type of interaction. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're so used to seeing these players on display during the Winter Olympics. Uh, so so players like, uh, like Marie-Philippe Poulain become national heroes for all of two weeks because of what they do in the games. And, and players like Hillary Knight as well also show out and, and do very well. And, and Tristan, I know Millie de Rocher very well off of the podcasting that we've done together. In terms of the personalities, and again, Natalie Spooner is another player to mention as well who's also put herself out there. In terms of the personalities in the women's game, what's it like putting those players out there for 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 more players for more people to to discover not just female hockey players but also men too yeah i mean our players are our greatest asset we say it all the time you know they're the ones that you know they're pushing the boundaries on the ice but away from the game they're great role models and ambassadors and they speak so well and they're engaging and accessible and they love meeting people and you know the thing about i think female athletes and certainly i guess i could speak for our sport we all know we play a role in the growth here and we know that, you know, many of the players who are part of the PWHPA may never reap the benefits of a women's pro league. They may never play in it. They may retire before that happens. They may not make a team, um, but they're playing a part that's significant and it's important and it's history in the making. Um, so, you know, our, our athletes need to be out there as much as possible. So we love when they're on podcasts and they're doing their thing and they're on social media and, um, they're just, they're awesome. I can't say enough about our players and, and I wish more people could see them and meet them. Right. Uh, for everybody, when I say we wish you the absolute best going. Yes. 21. Seriously. 
we're if if we're if if there's a <laughs> if there's a uh, a frame where we can be in some seats somewhere we'll be there <laughs> but in the meantime we'll uh, we'll probably be streaming or on a zoom call somewhere <laughs> in, in the meantime but we wish you the absolute best for you and for the pwhpa awesome. Jana, thank so, you so, so much appreciate it guys and I, you know i hope we can stay in touch and, and let's keep this going Please Absolutely. let's let's do that. You 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 were great with our questions today. We really appreciate you taking the time to join us on uh, this week's edition of the Scrum Podcast. Jana Heffer. Thanks for listening to the Scrum Podcast. If you want to send us questions, share your stories, you know, just say hi or whatever. Shoot us an email at the scrum podcast at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at the scrum podcast. And individually, I'm at J K A M C K E N Z I E. I felt I had to spell that whole thing out because some people get confused with the whole McKenzie thing is the a in McKenzie as well as uh, in my uh, middle name. I have two middle names uh, and Tristan is at Tristan d'amour. So basically his name just without the apostrophe. I'll have an update on my middle names soon enough. Ooh, just stay we're getting tuned. closer. We're getting closer. We're getting closer to that 100th episode. I'm just going to say that. So if you're interested in sponsoring us or buying ad space on the show, you can shoot us an email once again at the scrum podcast at gmail.com and we'll get the ball rolling. You can also support us for free. Wait. Oh, oh, we, we don't have an echo for this. One. You can also support us for free. Nothing? Second time? Okay. All right, fine. You can also support us for free by leaving a rating and review wherever you listen to this podcast and just by sharing it with a friend. You don't get an echo, J-Mac. That's fine. It's, it's I get me. It. It's I'm, actually I'm not a star. I'm not a star. Producer I'm Kevin. Star. Producer Kevin does not do anything. I literally, it's I. It's a special power move that I have. I, I can echo my voice. I just choose not to do it. Um, you get know, why I that works it. that way. I don't get I why that works do, that way. I only like, do oh, it I when I have it. I only do it to say those famous words, which I will not say because it's 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 not an it's because it's an odd number episode. I'll just say that. Special thank you to Cooper Richardson for letting us use his music as our intro. His SoundCloud link is in the description down below. The show is produced and edited by Kevin Laramie, to whom we are eternally grateful for, as part of the Sports Podcasting Network. You can find all the network shows, including Soccer Today, hosted by uh, Kevin Laramie and Dwayne Rollins, at sportspodcastingnetwork.com. Special thanks again to Jaina Hefford for joining us on episode 94 of the Scrum Podcast. Uh, Tristan and I both really enjoyed getting the opportunity to speak with her on the investment from Secret Deodorant and what's to come from the Dream Gap Tour. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to watching some games when that comes through. Go get yourself a hoodie. Um, yeah. Julian, I have a confession to make. Oh, okay. It, it's not a superpower. It's producer Kevin. He's just that good. Shout out to producer Kevin. Julian, so always what, Kevin, a pleasure. I'm not special? Kevin, I'm not special? What's, what's this? I'm not special? What's up? He's you're just speci- giving me the shrug. Julian, you're special in your right, own fine. way. I, you're I, special in your own way. Thanks for that, mom. Thanks for telling me that, mom. I really appreciate that. And also, yeah, likewise. <laughs> this was a great episode, despite despite that whole kerfuffle at the end. I'm uh, I I love. I'm doing not this a diva. Show. I'm not I a diva at all. Show. I love doing this show. I love women's hockey. Uh, please support both. And as always, we'll hear you all next time.